You know, it's generally known to the public that I'm a guy who can handle his fists pretty good. <laughs> this is a video essay on Woody Allen and what lessons about life we can possibly learn from his work. Woody Allen has been making films for decades, with his first film starting in 1969 and his most recent being this past year. Throughout his career, he's quietly put out more than 50 films. I especially like your early funny ones. <laughs> now, people my age probably know Woody Allen from Midnight in Paris, and people my parents' age might best remember him from Manhattan. But what people miss by not knowing his entire body of work is his unique position in film. Woody Allen is more than just one movie. He's a bunch of disparate ideas. So let's take a look at some of them. Woody Allen is an originator of the romantic comedy, playing around with the 90-minute boy meets girl genre in Love and Death and Played Against Sam long before all the tropes and cliches were established. What are you doing Saturday night? Committing suicide. What about Friday night? He is also the father of dialogue-driven narrative, found in everything today from 500 Days of Summer to Aaron Sorkin films to The Gilmore Girls. And a common mistake with his dialogue-heavy movies is people mistake the beliefs of Woody Allen for that of his character. But pay attention to how the women respond and their actions in his films. Like here in Manhattan, people think Woody Allen feels the way his character does. But they forget he's not just the actor and director. He's the writer, too. He created the girl, and the girl is saying no. Can't have a little faith in his work is a good example of trying to separate the art from the artist, even when it's difficult. He was also one of the first American filmmakers to go European. His films often deal with questions of death, moral relativity, existentialism, and the reasons relationships fall apart. Borrowing from Fellini and Igmar Bergman, he tells thoughtful stories, but with an American charm and humor rarely found in any movie from any country. Making a case for existential philosophers like Camus and Nietzsche, but in an accessible, non-academic manner. <coughs> Stick in your throat, son? Oh, these cigarettes, father. Brandy smoking. These? Oh, those are for sinners. Oh? You should try it. New Testament cigarettes. New Testament, huh? They've got that revolutionary incense filter. I'll try one. He is also the master of pace. In a time when films have a tendency to bloat both visually and narratively, he instead is brutal, his average film coming in at a total of 87 minutes. Many of his scenes are simply shown with a master shot for going close-ups to simply let the characters play out, or for going convention altogether, like in Husbands and Wives, where he uses a handheld camera and breaks the fourth wall 25 years before the office. But it's not just his movies, it's his approach to movies. The thing I like about Woody Allen is he just works. In a world where we see sequel after sequel, story stretched to trilogy, and trilogy stretched to four, he just cranks them out. A movie a year, always moving forward, never looking back. He's done comedy, romantic, drama, thriller, period, documentary. But they all focus on one thing, the human element. Telling stories grounded in reality. His movies, while fictional, are always trying to chip away at some larger truth about what it means to be human. There's a bit of Hemingway in Woody Allen, even if he mocks him in Midnight in Paris. I know hunters I know, or Belmonte, who's truly brave. It is because they love with sufficient passion to push death out of their minds until it returns as it does to all men. Think about it. However, I think the most useful aspect about Woody Allen is like so many of us, he grew up romantic, but not stupid. And as he got older, it became clear the romantic endings found in fairy tales were indeed fables, nothing more. There was no soulmate, no destiny, no grand gestures that win people back. Real life never plays out like that. In the real world, relationships are simply one nice thing in life, like playing tennis or reading a good book. And so his stories reflect that shifting the narrative away from idealizing people to instead finding romance and fulfillment in work in cities. After all, cities are a bit like women, beautiful, uncontainable, and always more romantic in the rain. What do you want? It was my first movie, Criticism. You know, I was trying to get these things to come out so interesting because real life is so boring. <laughs>